Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and this is going to be the second episode on my Anki C800 camera. On the previous video I go through the specs and some configuration and uh, today I want to show you some comparison between the Full HD C500 and the 4K C800 video and also talk about uh, integration in Node-RED. Before we go into the Node-RED uh, flow I thought I'm going to compare this C800 uh, Anki camera to the C500 which was my first Anki camera that I reviewed probably about six months ago or probably it was even more and the two cameras in, are you know sort of similar in a way that uh, the C500 is a 5 megapixel camera the C800 is an 8 uh, sorry 4k camera but you can buy both of them in different versions like the turret version the dome version or the bullet version but none of them offer, for example, object detection or um, PTZ movement or zooming. So I thought, um, you know, it would be a good uh, comparison to compare between the two because, because I guess in many situations you would ask yourself whether I should invest in a 4K camera or is it good enough that I just uh, have a regular HD camera. And of course the difference is that, you know, what do you want to use it for? Uh, do you need to just observe your surrounding? For example, what I use my HD camera is just to see out. Uh, so if somebody rings the door, I would know that is it the postman or if I see a van outside, I would know that it's one of the delivery companies uh, who is probably uh, giving me a package. So for those, probably an HD camera is good enough. But if you are specifically looking uh, at persons and you need to see their faces in order to um, in identify them, you know, who is approaching your house or your property, then in those situations maybe a simple HD camera is not enough and you should go for a 4K camera. So well you can see the live footage here and you, you're going to see this a lot. I'm creating this uh, recording uh, late in the evening so I'm not going to give you nice screenshots just this black and white uh, you know overnight shot. And by the way this big lamp here that you can see on the screen is uh, just another camera and this is how the IR lens of that IP camera looks like. So, you know, if you have some uh, situation where your objects or anything that you are trying to illuminate is probably too far away from the camera and it doesn't receive enough light, infrared light, well, you can just use another infrared camera or just an infrared light to give some extra illumination to the, to the surroundings. So what I want to show you is a couple of images and I've uh, placed the C500 and the C800 into the same location and I've just taken images uh, from the same scene. And so this is uh, what uh, the C500 sees, uh, you know, looking down my driveway. And this is the very same image from the C800. Actually, you can see the hood of the C500. So they are just literally, you know, 10 centimeters apart. So what you can see uh, from these two images is uh, the 500, so the HD camera has a more like a four, uh, three, sorry, four by three um, regular sort of like TV aspect ratio. And then the 4K camera has uh, a more traditional 16 by nine, so like a widescreen ratio, which um, I wouldn't say it's definitely good, but of course it really depends on your um, application. So if uh, you are looking at a driveway like mine, where the actual wide angle view is going to give you more view. So for example, here I can see sort of uh, this area where, um, you know, the kids left the, uh, the scooters and a little bit of this walkway. I mean, that's actually useful as opposed to this picture where I, I only see the driveway. So I think it does make sense to use the wide angle camera in some cases. Of course, in this particular um, you know, shot, I see a lot of the trees and the skyline, which you know I wouldn't really use. I mean, I could have panned this camera a little bit down so it sees a lot of uh, a little bit more of the walkway uh, directly beneath uh, beneath uh, the camera itself. And probably from the two images, you can also see that uh, there is a, well quite a few difference in the picture quality. So definitely, there is more definition in the uh, in the 4K camera. Although, you know, you are looking at a YouTube video, which is, uh, you know, just a full HD resolution, but probably you can tell that there is a better uh, image quality. Uh, but having said that, probably if I would have panned the 500 down, so it sees a little bit less of the sky than 
the exposure of the you know the rest of the image would be different but let me show you a comparison so i tried to zoom in on the pine tree which is on the left and and again you can uh, see the difference a little bit more here so uh, i mean i didn't want to zoom all the way in but uh, maybe i can just do that by you know zooming into the image so here in the uh, pine tree you can basically you know make out the contours but if i look at the same thing on the other cameras you can in some cases see the individual leaves as well so definitely that's the difference between what uh, regular hd and the 4k gives you and again if i look at the the you know the trees on the other side of the street um, you can make out a lot more details of the branches i mean of course it gets a little bit blocky because of the compression but i guess you get the idea so you are definitely getting more uh, resolution and if i try to give you a couple of uh, illustrations from the night footage so this is me standing on the driveway which is i would say roughly about seven meters from the camera this is what the 500 sees and this is what the 800 sees and again i mean probably from this photo you don't see the uh the details but you can probably tell that definitely the s800 has better resolution but if i again zoom into the zoom in on the image you see uh there is a lot more definition so this is how i look like on the uh, 500 and this is how i look like on the 800 so there is definitely a lot more definition on the photo so from this i mean if you don't know the person i would say that on the 500 you wouldn't be able to tell who the person is but on the 800 probably you can and there is you know definitely more facial features available or you can see and then i um, tried another example so i'm roughly about 15 meters away so it's almost at the gate and uh, this is what you see on the 500 and this is what you see in the 800 so it doesn't look a lot better uh, mostly because that's probably the end of the infrared reach but again if i try to zoom in um, yeah the the face just becomes a blob here on the c500 image and on the c800 at least you can see like you know the eyes and some other features and probably if you look at the vegetations above this uh, on the 500 it just becomes a blurred background and in here you can definitely make out the details so this is the kind of difference that you would expect uh, between a 4k and a full hd uh, ip camera and with this we got the uh, part where i'm going to talk about the node integration and uh, here i'm going to talk about a few specific uh, use cases uh, which uh, i also you know managed to uh, gather into this uh, dashboard as well so we are going to see how you can use a single image capture from the camera how you can also display a motion uh, live feed from the camera on uh, for example the node dashboard or for that matter any website and also we are going to use the on with events in order to capture motion events from the camera so this is what you see here and um, primarily i'm going to use the uh, uh, the node red dashboard to show all this information but i'm also going to give you a couple of examples how you can do the same with uh, uh, email so for example send yourself email messages or if you're using telegram also send images to telegram so the first thing is that uh, i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to talk about the image capture and uh, this is something that i used on uh, my other anki camera as well is uh, anki provides a url for you to access the camera stream or you know a picture so this is the url so it's the url of your device and then the rest is is going to be the same for all the cameras and um, what you can see here is that uh, we are accessing the picture for channel one and uh, here the channel one actually means the uh, mainstream so if you go to audio and video in the video you can see the mainstream so you can see the resolution so this is the four uh, sorry the full 4k resolution of the uh, uh, of the sensor so we are going to read that and what seemed to have changed um, in the c800 as opposed to the c500 which i've tested as I said probably like six months ago, is that I was able to pass the user ID and the password here in the URL, but 
but now it is only working if I'm, I'm selecting this option use authentication and I select digest authentication and I provide the admin user ID and the admin password that I use to log into the administration side of the camera itself so this website so and if you do this this uh, HTTP request is going to return a binary buffer and you can do a couple of different things with this binary buffer so for example I can base 64 encode it I can put it into a template node which is going to format this uh, base 64 image into an image tag HTML image tag and I can put that into just a dashboard as a template uh, template node and I also have this uh, image preview node which is um, let me find you I always forget which one is that image image output so it is node red contrib image output and that just basically displays the image in your dashboard which you can't really see because it's you know under the other nodes so if I trigger this then we get an updated image which I mean you wouldn't really see it's updated because everything is dark but uh, that's what is getting displayed here on the uh, on the dashboard that's itself and in the node red flow here in the template I just uh, basically resize the image to 320 by uh, 240 so it's still the full 4k image I'm just making it smaller on the on the dashboard UI otherwise it will fill the entire screen and actually I do like to use the HTTP node I think it's it works uh, you know pretty fast uh, from node red but of course the other option is to use the on with uh, functionality within the camera to get the media so for this I'm using this uh, node red contrib on with nodes and uh, the reason I'm showing you here because uh, this is not added to the palette in node red so if you want to install it you just have to install it manually and uh, here in the github you would find all the information how you need to install this uh, you know what is the current version because uh, it gets updated from time to time and then every single thing that is implemented in these on with nodes are displayed here and for every case there is a very good example document and I'm not going to go through all of these because I'm just uh, you know specifically want to get some of the basic functionality but as I said um, you can use the on with nodes as well and here you configure your Anki C800 camera again you provide the IP address the port is 80 and then you uh, provide the on with username and the password and that's important because this is something that you have to configure here so it's under network advanced settings and integration protocol so for as first you enable the on with interface and here you create a user ID and a password so I created a user which is called the on with I specified a password and I set the um, a level or the access level to administrator but of course you can just lower it but since I was playing with it I wanted full access uh, in order to you know test all functionality and um, and yeah that's it and once you configure that the only other option you have within this uh, media node is uh, what is the action so I want to get the snapshot image as you can see there is a lot of stuff in here but uh, most of these are about getting you know camera details and camera settings from uh, over the on with interface and I mean it's nice that you can do it but you wouldn't really use it for anything to be honest so I want to get the get snapshot image and here you can also specify whether you want the mainstream or the substream so the full 4k image or the substream image which is like 640 by 480 so I do the mainstream and that gives you this uh, exactly the same thing as what the HTTP, HTTP uh, node gives you um, for some reason when I was testing it for the first time this wasn't working but um, yeah I mean it has been fixed but you will see me using the HTTP node for uh, the rest of the example so but I just wanted to mention this and of course if you want to for example store the image because you want to capture a still image let's say every hour you can also you know call the HTTP node which is going to return the image and I created this function node 
which is uh, going to create a random, well, not random file name, but it's going to create a file name uh, which will have a name of snapshot underscore and the year, the month, the date, the hour, the minute, and the second.jpg, and it's going to put it into this folder. So you can create an inject node, which uh, let's say it triggers every day or every hour or something, and it's just going to create a snapshot. So if you need to do that, for example, if you need to, if you want to use the camera to make a time lapse, you can just do it in order. It will create the images and you can just download the images from your server and, I don't know, create an MP4, uh, like a video a file from that. Or, for example, if you want to send the image to Telegram, again, you can create the same HTTP request, you can save the image, and you can create an image message using this uh, function node. So if I trigger this, it sends the image and you can see the new message just appeared on, on my phone. So it says picture from the front camera. And here in the function node, you just have to uh, create a very simple one-line document which contains your chat ID and then it contains the type photo, uh, the, uh, the fixed um, link or sorry, the uh, path to the image that got saved and you can also add some, you know, comment to it. But if you rather want to use email instead of uh, Telegram, you can just uh, again call the uh, IP camera to get the image and then you can create an email. So here in the email, you can set up the object that is going to send to the email node. So you set up an attachment object and then you put the attachment content is the actual file name. So that's the message.payload that goes into attachment content. You uh, specify the file name that it's a snapshot. You specify the topic, which is the subject of the email, and you also specify the um, a a payload, which is going to be the body. And then there is one more option down here, which is the two. So that's what the email is going to go to. And you just push that into an email node. And for me, I've configured my Gmail account. So you press that, and that's going to send you an email with an attachment. But if you want to receive multiple emails, sorry, multiple attachment in a single email, I've also created this example for you. And the beginning is pretty much the same. So you set up the email subject, the email body, and the two email address. And what this is going to do is, uh, as you can see, um, when you fire this inject node, it's going to send you one, uh, it's going to ask for one image from the camera. But then the same message is also going to, to go through this 10 second and 20 second delay, which again are going to fire the um, IP camera again. So it's going to take three photos 10 seconds apart, and then it's going to collect all the images. And once all the images are collected, I mean, it's just a simple node which uh, saves all the images into um, the context uh, memory and it waits for three images and once the third image arrived then it puts all the images into a single payload and sends it off to the email node so if i execute this one you can see that the first one got generated and we are waiting for the delay and after 10 seconds this one gets uh, sent or triggered again so that's the second image taken and finally there will be a third one coming along shortly And if I open Gmail, this is the first um, email that I've received. So you can see the single image here. And this is the second email I received with the three dedicated, or sorry, the three separate snapshots. So it's very simple. In the Node-RED flow, I'm also going to include you this flow uh, because this is something that I also used in earlier uh, cameras in order to capture um, the live footage into like a short video segment. So again, maybe you have uh, a, like an external motion sensor which is connected to Node-RED. When it detects motion, you can use this flow to capture, let's say, a minute of, uh, of live footage into an MP4 file. Well, you could do, I mean, I could do that in the past, but I couldn't do it with the C800 camera because uh, with this new camera, um, Enki is using the H.265 compression, video compression, which is a much better video compression than the previous H.264. Um, and um, if you're using a network recorder, that's going to save you uh, storage space on that. So you would be able to store more um, uh, footage. 
The problem is that the FFmpeg that I'm using to convert the RSTP, uh, sorry, the RTSP stream to MP4 doesn't support H.265 natively. So I found some instructions online how you can recompile it with the H.265, but uh, that's just a way too complicated for me to, to do that. So I think I'm just going to leave this here because, um, you know, maybe uh, in a couple of months there is going to be a newer version of FFmpeg, which is going to support H.265. So when that happens, you would be able to just, uh, you know, use that. But in the flow, the way I, I created this whole flow is that in this change node, you can specify the, the file that it needs to, you know, save or capture the video into. And that gets added to the, um, to the UR, sorry, the command line that you can see here. So FFmpeg, da, da, da. and then at the end, it's going to put the MP4 file name. So if you just copy and paste this into, the, uh, into your uh, Linux terminal, with the file name at the end, you would be able to see if your FFmpeg supports H.265 uh, or not. So if it's going to run through, then it's fine, it's working. If it's not working, then you will receive some sort of error message which uh, um, tells you that something is wrong with the input codec or something similar. But actually, I found another way in order to integrate live video because with this solution, you can create a video file, but you wouldn't be able to integrate a live video feed into your um, web page, for example, into Node-RED dashboard. But as you can see here, I mean, hopefully you can make out that uh, the um, I have a wind gauge here, which is spinning, and also the time is changing. So this is definitely live feed. And I could do that because um, most web browsers, or for example, Chrome, does not support uh, RTSP streams uh, because um, they use different codecs, but they support motion JPEG stream. And actually you can configure the Anki camera to use, as you can see here, if I go back to the video configuration, I can still configure the mainstream to use H.265, but if I go to the substream, the sub substream could be also H.265, but it can be also JPEG sorry, MJPEG, so motion JPEG. So that's going to be a, a definitely a lower resolution, so 600 by 480 here, but it's going to be MJPEG. And the good thing about MJPEG is that you can just uh, put it into, a, into an image tag and the browser would be able to display the live uh, video feed without you know, any plugins or any special code. And in order to do that, <laughs> the only thing you need is you just need a template node and within the template node you just format a, um, a small HTML code so as you can see I created an iframe and the source of the iframe is a link so again the IP of the camera and uh, the HTTP preview for from channel 102 which is the sub channel and also I've uh, configured the width and the height to the same as the video stream or the video format and that's it so that basically just formats an iframe into the Node-RED dashboard. And as soon as you display the Node-RED dashboard in a Chrome browser or basically any browser, then the browser is going to start displaying the stream for you. So that, this is great. That's easy. In the rest of the flow, I created some more examples how you can create the, the whole template update, generating files, sending telegram messages uh, using the OnWith uh, image or the on with media node instead of the http node but i just like the http node better um, and i also have the uh, same examples for the email i just haven't connected the end of them to the email node but they work exactly the same so i think what we can do now is we can focus our attention on the on with events and here um, uh, again, we need a new node, which is the on with events. Uh, here you specify the Anki camera. You don't have to specify anything in the actions because we are going to send the actions uh, from these uh, inject nodes. And um, what, is, um, what is happening here is that in uh, the camera would be able to send you 
a lot of different messages. Some of the messages we don't even care about. So we are going to look for you know specific messages. Uh, we are going to look for motion messages. Um, I also going to I've, I've created a note for a temper message, but yeah, that basically never triggers. So uh, I mean, you know, nobody bothers my camera. And also, I've created this additional node here, which I have disconnected because I was getting too many messages, which uh, is going to send you a Telegram message for any other on with event, which is not any of these that we have, uh, you know, specified here above. So the camera would send you an event whenever it detects a motion, and uh, also when it no longer detects a motion. And of course, this uh, C5, uh, C800 camera doesn't have any object recognition. So that's basically just looking at the image and whether the image changes to a certain amount, then it's going to detect motion. So what I'm going to use this for is that when a motion is detected, it's going to capture an image. And when, when the motion is no longer detected, it's going to capture an image as well. So hopefully we would be able to capture somebody coming in and then maybe, you know, leaving the scene. But in most cases, the end, uh, picture is going to be just an empty image. I mean, nobody on the screen. And I also have to tell you that it, today is a really windy day. So the camera is picking up a lot of movement from branches and shadows moving around. So all the examples I'm going to show you is, uh, is going to be pretty much the same. So you wouldn't see any person on the image because it was just triggering on all sorts of random motions in the, uh, in the garden. And the way you use this is that, um, once the flow deploys, you will see that the N key, sorry, the on with event node it shows is connected. And then you have to click on this to start listening because uh, you have to start listening. Otherwise, you will not get, uh, receive the, uh, the events immediately. And you can also stop listening at any point. Uh, so if you want to receive events from the camera all the time, what you can do is you can set uh, up this inject node to execute automatically on uh, on on start so that would you know start listening to the event immediately as the the flow deploys or as when the uh, normal dread restarts and this um, inject node is going to send you a, a payload and i'm not sure if we are going to oh yeah yeah okay we are going to see that so it's going to send you a payload, which is a JSON payload, and it has a couple of different things. Oh, for example, we can see motion detection here. So you can see that it has a topic within the payload. It has a topic and that topic ha can have a lot of different values. So you can see motion alarm and also you can see cell uh, motion detector. And yeah, we can see probably some other things as well. So for the motion um, event, so first of all, I wanted to create a change node, sorry, a switch node on the topic itself. So I would be looking for the rule engine cell motion detector slash motion. I also going to look for the monitoring slash processor usage and the temper detector. And um, uh, also there is another one, which is video source and motion alarm. And everything else goes to the otherwise uh, the last exit, sorry, the last um, output, which um, is going to send you the whole uh, JSON in a text file for you. But as I said, I just disabled it because I was getting too many messages. In fact, I can probably show you how this one works, because if I start scrolling up, as I said, you know, I'm getting a lot of these motion started, motion ended because of, you know, the trees moving and the bushes and everything. So I just need to scroll, you know, further up during the day. And again, probably a lot of shadows and still stuff moving around uh, that are triggering all sorts of messages for me on the phone. But if I go all the way up and this is what this last output and this stringify message.payload is going to give you. So if you want to monitor what sort of messages are being sent, you can uh, connect those two nodes together and you will start receiving these messages on Telegram as well. So the first output, this is what I want to talk more about, is this cell motion detector or motion detection. And uh, it has another property that I'm going to look for. Uh, let's look at this switch node. So I'm looking at the data.name. 
So as you can see, data.name. And I'm checking whether that is says is motion. And also I have another switch, which is going to look for the data dot value because that would be either true or false uh, and that means that either the uh, the, mo uh, the motion is detected or the motion is no longer detected so if motion is detected i mean i just set a text value which says motion detected and then it goes to a node sorry a dashboard element which is basically this text here so motion is detected or no motion and then um, i take an image I save that image and I send it off to a Telegram message and I also uh, convert it to base64 and put it into a template node and into another UI template which is getting displayed here. So when the motion um, detect start or detection starts, it's going to update this image and then when no motion is detected, it's going to update that image. And also you would see, you would get the two messages that uh, you can see on my phone. So yeah, that's it. And what I also noticed that if the camera detects motion, it's usually going to send you multiple messages uh, in quick succession whenever it still detects some sort of motion. So if you have a person moving into the view and it probably takes uh, you know maybe 10 seconds for it to move through, maybe you would receive you know 10 different messages. So I just included this limit um, node here which uh, is going to limit the number of messages uh, one every 15 minutes and it's just going to discard any other messages. This is just to limit the, um, you know, the amount of images that I receive. And the same for the stop message as well. And you can see the same would happen for temper. So if the camera detects a temper, again, it's going to send an image out. And the, the second output, which goes into here, um, that's the processor usage. So I just format the, the data into a new payload that I can send to a UI chart. And that UI chart is getting displayed here. So, I mean, it doesn't really change a lot. I can't really explain these spikes. Maybe it's doing some sort of internal maintenance. But anyway, uh, yeah, the processor usage usually hovers around this uh, sort of like 13 to you know, peaks of 40. And then at odd moments, it goes up to 100. And to be honest, that's pretty much it. So um, I also have another um, a simple flow here, which is going to record a, an image, and it's going to send that short recording in a Telegram message. So that could be another integration where instead of receiving just images, you want a short clip uh, to be sent to you. But as I said, that uses the same FFmpeg method that I mentioned before. So it's not working for the C800, at least, at, at least it's not working at the moment. It was working for the C500 just because it still uses H.264 or it can be switched to use H2, H2, H.264, which FFmpeg still supports. So I was able to use that. But these are the scenarios that I wanted to uh, capture or talk about because I think these are some you know useful scenarios but as I said there is a lot of other things what the on with node supports and uh, when I was going through these examples using uh, this page and the examples that I shown here I copied all of them to you know node red to test them out and again there is a lot of other stuff that you can do but it would be mostly getting the configuration details out of the phone, getting some info, sorry, not the phone, the IP camera, getting some, conf, uh, you know, features out, settings, and, you know, you, you can do it once, you can just view them, but you, you're not really going to use them in, uh, in an automation scenario. So this is why I thought that these would be useful and valuable. And of course, as you read most videos, I'm going to have a link to this Node-RED example flow in the video description. So if you want to implement the same functionality, you can just download it and import it into Node-RED. But I think that would be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.